Okay, so the first thing you want to do is remove the negative battery cable. When doing any major repair on the car, you always want to do this, is remove that negative cable so any wiring or anything that goes on will not cause any electrical shorts or problems. Okay, next you're going to want to remove the air intake. It comes in three different pieces, uh, but you're going to want to remove the piece that is on top of the intake throttle first. So you're going to start with this one here. There's two bolts where I am there. One was missing already, so I'm only taking out the one. And then you'll see there's two more. Then this one is what squeezes the air intake around the throttle. So you want to also take that off with an 8 millimeter socket. Then squeeze this metal clamp here and pull it back and then you can wiggle off this rubber hose which is attached to the valve cover. And also don't forget to unplug the intake air temperature sensor. You just squeeze the connector and pull it back. Okay, next we're going to remove the other piece of the air intake. So there's a bolt there, and then there's also one down through this hole here. So you're going to need an extension to get that one out down there. And this rubber hose here, you can either wiggle it off, or you can take out that bolt right there. And then that little piece will come off for the intake as well. So using about a 6 or 8 inch extension with a deep socket, you can go down and get that out quite easily. So remove that bolt and remove the one by the coolant hose. So guys, you see me using power tools all the time here. You don't have to. You can do pretty much everything by hand. But I just wanted to speed up the process and speed up the videos. You don't have to see me spending there, spending hours unwinding a ton of bolts, right? So that's why I did it this way. Okay, next you're going to want to loosen this nut right here. Um, this is what's holding the throttle cable on. So you can loosen that one to the left and then you'll be able to wiggle the whole cable out. Then there's a slit in the metal and the cable will slide right through that slit and you can remove the cable from there. Next you can pop the cable out of these holding tabs. There's one here and then one also further down. Just push straight down and it'll pop out. Then you can kind of coil up the cable and put it off to the side so it's out of the way. Next, we're going to drain the coolant since we're going to be taking off a bunch of different coolant hoses coming up. So this is the tab down there and just put a good bucket underneath a good catch pan and turn that caulk right there counterclockwise and it will drain out the coolant. You don't have to remove it all the way but the more you thread it out the faster the coolant will drain out so you can kind of get started. Okay, so we're going to pretty much remove everything in this area, all those ground straps, uh, loosen all the clamps for the coolant hoses, unplug the coolant temperature sensor right there, and so yeah, let's do it.
It's a good idea to thread the bolts back in where you take them out. That way you know where they go back. If you don't do it that way, you should um, put them in a bag and write on the bag with a marker what they are and where they go. And it'll just help later on when you put everything back together. Or you can get a plastic container like this with all different little compartments. So you can put your different nuts and bolts in each compartment and write on it right over top on the plastic with an erasable marker where they go. So exhaust, intake, and it'll just help keep it organized and you can put them in starting left to right and going across just like you read and then you know when you're putting them back in you go in the reverse order as well. A really nice tool to have is a 90 degree pick like this. When you're working with coolant hoses, they often haven't been removed for 10 years, so they're really, they're really tight and stuck on there. So breaking the rubber seal is a lot easier to do with a 90 degree pick like this. You just stick it in the side and wiggle it around and you can remove it. You can use a screwdriver, but it's just harder to get at it from that angle. Inch. Coolant clamps like this are typically an 8 mil um, head to remove them, but if they've changed it before, people could put on any size clamp. So this happened to be a quarter inch socket to remove it. So yeah, it's good to have standard and metric sockets just in case. A nice tool to remove coolant hose clamps is this cable type clamp remover. You can get it in tight spots and you squeeze it with your hand and it clamps it. So you don't need one, you can use pliers for most things, but it's a handy extra tool to have if you're going to be doing a lot of work with cars and coolant hoses. So if the hose isn't on too tight, if there's not a big seal, you can often grab it, twist it um, side to side and wiggle it a little bit and pull down and the hose should come off. If not, you can use a pick or a screwdriver to break the seal again. So this wiring harness here, there's a little tab and you push it in and then you can slide the uh, clip out that's attached to that coolant pipe right there. This one's half broken already but you still push that tab in and you can remove it. This clamp right here that uh, I'm going to remove, you don't really need to remove. Um, I did anyway. It may allow you to rotate the pipe if you do break the seal, but you can probably just leave it like that uh, and remove it from the other side like we will here. Okay, now to get this long pipe out here, there's one bolt holding it. right down in there. So once you remove that, then we'll be able to pull straight back. There's also a seal right in there. So yeah, it's going to be in there tight, probably hasn't been out for 15 years or so. So just keep wiggling it, pull on it, 
and eventually it'll pop out like that. Now we're going to move over to the throttle. So most of these connectors can't really go in the wrong spot. They, they're all pretty much each to their own size and the pin numbers that they'll only click into the right spot. Um, but just a good tip is to use paint pens. Red, white, there's different colors. And you can just mark them the same location. So side and side is red. Then you'll line them up later and you'll know where they go. This one's on the top. Okay, now we're going to unplug all of these electrical connectors around the throttle. We're going to unplug the throttle position sensor. We're going to unplug the EVAP purge uh, valve. We're going to unplug the MAP sensor, the manifold absolute pressure sensor. Same thing as MAP. And we're also going to unplug the idle air control valve right here. Then using some sort of pry tool, you can pop up this clip here that's holding this wiring in. It's a good tool to have something with a open end like this. There's different types of them for popping out clips. Can, using it again over here, pop out the, the coolant connector here, or the coolant clip holding that in. Okay, now we're going to remove the fuel line. So using just some pliers, you can squeeze that clamp and wiggle it back and then wiggle that hose right off for the fuel line. Now the next line, there's these green clips there that you need to squeeze in and to get past the point on the black there. So you want to squeeze it on the top and the bottom. It's on both sides. Squeeze them both in and kind of rotate it a little bit so that you get the black um, part there past the green connector. And you'll see right here it slides past and then you can put a rag or something there to try and catch some of the fuel. But fuel is going to kind of spill out a little bit and it will evaporate so it's not a big deal. Okay, that's it for this video, but I'll see you in the next videos where we will continue this Honda Civic teardown.